Hi everyone, this is day four of the fast of Daniel. And we're, we've been, we're going through, reading through the book of Luke. So today's reading is chapter seven. So as I was reading through this chapter, there's a lot in this chapter. There's many things that we could talk about. There, there are many passages that you're familiar with. One thing struck me in verse 16. It said, Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God. Great fear swept through the crowd, and they praised God. So what had happened? Jesus was going into this village, a small town called Nain, and he... And as he was passing by, out of the, the gate of the city, there was a funeral procession. The funeral of this boy, the, the last son of his mother. His mother was a widow. So now his mother had no one in the world. No sons, no daughters, and no husband. And so, you know, they were carrying the casket of the boy. And they were coming out, a large group of people. And so Jesus saw the mother crying, and he was touched, the Bible says. And he told her not to cry anymore. Then he went up and touched the coffin, so everyone stopped. Then he spoke to the dead boy, and he told him to get up. And he immediately sat up in the coffin and began to talk to everyone. And then it says, great fear swept through the crowd. Not joy, not joy, not happiness. Great fear swept through the crowd and they began to praise God. Why? So they saw something they'd never seen before. Jesus Imagine stopping a funeral procession and, and raising that person back to, to life again. And he gave him back to his mother. So they'd never seen that before. So they were impressed with the power of God. But they realized that, and maybe some of them didn't realize that that was God, but they realized that either God was there or some great prophet, but that the power of God. They had just seen the power of God. When we see the power of God in our life, when God works in our life, we have this fear. It's not a bad kind of fear. It's a good kind of fear where we... Everything in life begins to make sense. We begin to look at things in a different way. And we realize that how great God is, how powerful He is, and that we should be careful how we act and talk. We've been talking this week about baptism in water and dying to the world. People who don't die to the world, they don't have this fear. They don't fear God. They don't have this fear of God. They don't realize how great God is and how much we need him. If, if you have no fear of God, it means that you're far away from him. Anyone who is close to God has this fear, a healthy fear. It's a fear that keeps us from getting into trouble. There, uh, it's a fear that that causes us to avoid sin, avoid bad situations, avoid things that we feel would displease God. And so when we have this fear, we realize that we have to die to the world, that we, we can't live for the world, that the world has, has nothing to offer us. And only when we have this fear this is a sign that someone is close to God. They respect Him. 
in Jesus' life, he would wake up early in the morning to pray. He would get up before anyone else when it, when it was still dark, and he would go to a hill or a mountain to pray for some hours before he began the day. Even though he was God, but he, he had this fear, this respect. He wanted to communicate with his Father. And that's something that we need to have. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have to develop this fear. This fear of God, this fear of uh, being too involved in the world, too involved in uh, loving the world, loving the things of the world. Yes, we have houses, cars, family, jobs. We have different things and we enjoy them. Uh, hopefully, every day you're able to sit down to a nice meal and enjoy that food. That's not wrong. That's good. That's a blessing to get together with family, sometimes to have a party, to celebrate something. It's a good thing. But constantly, all, all the time, we need to have this fear of the Lord to, to honor Him, to realize that we need Him, that, that there, are cer there are certain things in life. If we do certain things in life, we are, we are pulling away from God. We're, we're becoming farther and farther away from Him. And there are other things that we do, we get close to God. We, we hear His voice more. We feel His presence. We, we, we have this conviction that He's with us. And we begin to see things the way He sees. And we begin to have His nature. But this, this great fear swept through the crowd when they saw a great miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, have you ever felt this fear? Do you have this fear? Is this fear a part of your life, this healthy fear? Of course, there's that unhealthy fear where people uh, have panic attacks, when they're depressed, when uh, they have some anxiety disorder. That's not the fear that I'm talking about. Uh, people who have nightmares and they're afraid to go to sleep. That's not what I'm talking about. That's the unhealthy, worldly fear. I'm talking about a holy fear, a fear that comes from heaven, from God. That along with this fear comes a holy life, a good life, a pure life. A life where you don't, you try, even though we're imperfect, we try the best we can to live for God. So, do you have this fear? This, with them, is, is a great fear. This great fear, this holy fear came upon them. Because they realized what is going on. We're in the presence of of someone truly great and holy and pure because what Jesus did was, was he, he helped this woman who had lost her whole family and he gave him back a son who would take care of her and, and help her and, and be her companion. So... They all saw that it as something very good. It wasn't something greedy or selfish that he did. He was helping others. He was serving that woman. So if you don't have this fear, you need to fix this right away because you're in danger. You're far from God. And anything can happen to you. You're not protected. And the thing is, if you don't, develop this fear quickly, you may lose the desire to get close to God completely. If you're coming to church and you don't have this fear, you need to start seeking it. One way you can do that, start reading the Bible consistently and practicing it and meditating on it, thinking about it. Think about what you, what you read in the morning all through the day. Start praying, start fasting. 
Start reaching out and trying to help other people. If you can, go to prison with us. Go, go evangelizing on the street with us. Go and like the angel of the night. Uh, in some churches, we have the angel of the night. Go and help. So start helping others. Take your mind off of yourself. You're going to start developing this fear of the Lord. All right. Okay, let's pray right now. Close your eyes. What, what an amazing passage this is in chapter 7 where the whole crowd had this great fear of you, Lord Jesus Christ, when they saw what an amazing miracle you did. They realized that they were in the presence of God or at least in the presence of someone great. And my Lord, Help us to have this fear for you when we come to church. But also, every day, when we're in school, when we're in our job, when we're, when we're at home, wherever we are, help us to have this great fear, realizing that we're in your presence and that you are the only Savior and that our life is going to be a disaster without you my God open the eyes of those people whose eyes are shut unblock their ears take away their hard heart and make it soft again make us sensitive to you to your voice in the name of the Lord Jesus my God help those who are far from you this week give them the courage to decide to be baptized to die to their old life and to live for you. Come right now, my Lord. As we read, Luke, fill us with your presence. And Holy Spirit, if there are people right now, right now at this moment, who are deciding that they need to be baptized, so strengthen them and give them the certainty that the decision that they're making is right. And if there's someone that's ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill them with your presence. Come and transform them in Jesus' name. Be blessed right now. All of you who are watching this video, who are participating in the, in the fast of Daniel, be blessed. Be transformed. These 21 days are going to change your life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So let's be firm about this fast of Daniel, staying away from news and sports and frivolous things, uh, social media and... Uh, just surfing the internet, let's focus on God, reading the Bible, praying, staying close to God, thinking about Him. And the goal of this fast is for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What a great thing that will be. Amen. I'll be, we'll be on again tomorrow. So today, remember, read your reading. Our reading is Luke chapter 7. Read the whole thing, meditate on it. There's so many things to bless your life. See you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.